Hello all, my name is Balram Prasad and I am working with Microsoft USA as a senior software engineer. I am also Microsoft certified cloud and data solution architect. Today I am going to talk about Azure data services. What are the different services offered inside this umbrella and how we can decide to which use which service and which scenario and we are going to talk about few scenario and uh, and a few services so this is not a demo session uh, it is just had ppt and i will go through some services and i will talk about that one so let's uh, start on that one okay so now it is data underpins everything it fuels the modern internet right without it there is no application every application is either collecting some of the data from us or from our users that how we are using that application or if it installed in mobile how where we are we are where we are traveling and other things right there there are too much data is being gathered from different applications and this constant and ever increase hunger for data means there is a lot of data is right so there were a days where we were dealing into megabytes and gigabytes but now we are dealing into petabytes right terabytes and petabytes of data so when we have so much data now we need a solution for all businesses where we work so that we can use the data in more efficient and effective manner and that is where Azure Data Services comes. Azure Data Services is an excellent example to this problem. It provides a full suite of in-to-end -in services that covers every need. Either you take it, you need a database or, or you need a real-time data collection need or you want something processing, you need for business intelligence, you want to pull out some data insight for that one or you want to do some machine learning out of that one. So that is where all this coming, right? It provides all of the kind of, uh, we talked about relational database, no SQL database, it provides compute options, right? We are going to see few of the things and we are going to talk about uh, few of the services just now. So when we talk about data, right? What are the some common life cycle associated with data, right? Either we ingest the data, the first stage is that one, right? We collect the data from different sources, either it is from some mobile application, either web application or some batches, some different places. We stream data from IoT devices or video streaming. All the data we ingest in some place, right? And then we need to store that data where we are going to store the data, right? Then uh, we have to process and analyze that one. We have to figure out some good insight and explore and visualize in a manner where our leaders, our company can take a great decision based on the data so that uh, we can move around that one, right? We have to share that one. So this, these are the four data life cycle generally happens in the data world. When we talk about data, which kind of store we, we are talking about, right? Some stores are relational store where we put data into relational format. Some place we put into data into key value pairs. Some, uh, some system we store the data in some cases, document DBs. Graph related data we have, we store into graph database. We have something in column family database. We have time series database, we have object storage where multimedia files are there, we have search engine related databases. So this kind of different data store is supported by Azure and it is some of the data store we are, we are talking about that one. And for that, if we talk about services, Azure SQL is a relational database, right? So Azure SQL is a fully platform hyperscale database supported by Azure. And if you need that one, you can go for that one. We have Azure Cosmos, that is document DB, we can say, and that is a uh, that is a great service if you want to build something with 99.99% percent uptime and it is globally distributed database if you have some need where um, you want to consume, give the uh, you want to talk about latency where one reason is your your some of the consumer from one region does not have to wait too much we can go for that kind of service 
if you have something which you do not want to go to fully platform as a service fully certain software as a service then you can go for um, microsoft sql server on a vm you can install on the vm so that you do not have to buy any physical machine on your data center on your offices right you do not have to maintain that one if you do not want to go to plain VMs and install that one, you can go for Azure SQL Managed Instance where all the internal data uh, uh, hardware will be managed. So you do not have to patch it, you do not have to maintain anything about that one. So that is also a great option if you want to lift shift some of the data, some of the application from your uh, local servers which you have into your data center or offices, you want to lift shift some of the uh, Azure um, uh, SQL Server related application, you can do that. If you are talking about and uh, working on some open source related te technology and you are using for MySQL, you can go for Azure databases for MySQL. You, we have support for PostgreSQL also. You have, we have support for MariaDB. We have Apache Cassandra support. So if you are working on something related to open source, definitely you have a lot of options here also, right? If you are working on some something on web application where you are collecting a lot of I mean, insight related data, then we can use app inside. If you want in-memory database, we can go for Redis cache. If you need to share any data on network, like network share, you can use Azure data share, right? We have for warehousing need, we have Azure SQL warehouse now, which is going to be integrated part of Snaps. We have that one. So we can we can use that one. If you want to store petabyte of data, we have data lake for that one. You can store all kind of data over there. So that are the different uh, some of the data store services Azure provides for you. So now, as we talked about in life cycle of data, that ingestion is the first step, right? What are the some of the services Azure we can leverage for that one? If you want to ingest data in batch mode, we can go for data factory, right? Data factory is one of the great options where it supports a lot of um, source and destination where you can plug in, pull all the data in, and change that one, put that one, right? If you want to stream some of the data, we have Kafka, we have IoT for IoT scenario, we have IoT hub we have event hub right we can do all of the ingestion from that purpose we can connect web app with app inside where some of the app inside logs data will come for user so that these are the sum of the services we generally leverage for ingestion purpose now you have data is coming into place how to process the data right we have azure data bricks uh, which which has a spark right which has a spark you can process all um, uh, big data workload big data related scenario on that one we have azure snaps it is a great service where if you are working with sql you can work if you are working on a spark it has a spark uh, engine it's, it's inside it you are working with python you can use notebook feature you can as working at scala you can do all of the things right if you have to do some compute based on a stream related thing, we have a Azure Stream Linux, we can do that one. If you want to fully platform a service and doing something based on event and other things, we can go for function app also. We have Azure Automation and Batch services also for different kind of needs. So we have a lot of some compute related things also supported by us on Azure and we can use that one. <coughs> now. Once the data is there and we are doing all the all the compute related thing, we are transforming the data. We have how to visualize the data. We have Power BI, which is a great service for visualization purpose. You can connect all of data store and you can visualize that one. You can share with your colleague. You can share with leaders, right? To get inside of that one, we have. Azure Data Explorer, where we can explore the data. We have Azure Analysis Service, where we can implement all this uh, CLS and RLS feature top of that one. If we talk about open source world, we have support for Azure My, uh, MySQL for Azure databases. We have support for PostgreSQL. We have support for MariaDB, Cassandra DB. We have Databricks. We have Hadoop also, HBase, Kafka. All this great open source technology is supported by Azure platform itself. So I, I, I guess we have great flexibility to choose whatever we want to choose. 
we we have azure synapse analytics as you've talked about that this is uh, one of the new entry in azure data services it is bringing lot of good feature from sql world sql warehousing we have some great feature from uh, apache spark so if you see this diagram it is connecting to gen 2 it um, the primary gen 2 we can connect gen 1 gen 2 everything and then we have runtime analytical runtime either you want to use sql either you want to do a spark thing you can do that one uh, there is integration for ingestion purpose there is integration you do not have to go in third person second other services uh, for for governance purpose we have machine uh, azure per view for machine learning we can integrate with machine learning visualization we can integrate with power bi so all this is there yeah, for different notebook support you can write notebook into c sharp also you have scala you have python you have spark sql support all these things you can do inside this service also so this this is one of the great service uh, is there now let's see that one that what are the some use cases to pick that uh, service because we talked about so many services in inside that data services so how to pick that one right if you want to build something a uh, uh, modern cloud application right with relational data base you have some data which you want to store into relational databases and you do not want to manage any infra right then you can go for fully serverless compute hyperscale database and that is azure sql database you can connect and it gives a great performance feature and durability for that one if you want to migrate your SQL workload into Azure, right, uh, and you want to maintain everything from maybe you have some jobs which is not compatible, you want to go to no, not go to fully platform as a service, then you can go for a SQL managed instance also, or you can have uh, you want to if you want to operating system level access, you can go for SQL Server on virtual machine. That option also is there, right? If you want to build a scalable SQL fully managed enterprise services with web open source, right? You can go for Postgres SQL, right? You want to do for some community, you want to use some community related MySQL database, then you can use Mazur database for MySQL. If you want to deliver deliver high availability and elastic scaling to open source mobile and web app, then you can go for MariaDB, right? If you want to build uh, application with guaranteed low latency and high ability anywhere in globally for any scale, then you can go for Azure Cosmos DB and it, so, see, it supports a lot of different type of API, it supports MangoDB API, it supports no SQL API, so you can play along that one and you can do all of operations. If you want to uh, use some in-memory caches for fast that your web application react fast or something or mobile application is pulling some of the data from maybe API or something different, then you can leverage Azure Cache for Redis also. And uh, for migration, we have a tool called Azure Database Migration. And also for if you want to use cluster and other things from managed services, Cassandra is also option for that one. Uh, we can use that one. So these are the some use cases we can take depending upon our scenario. Now, how to pick that one? This is a sample flow chart. We can see that one, how we are going to pick if we want to pick some of the things, right? Let me scale this one a little bit. So uh, suppose we want to requiring some compatible format, right? Then what we are need for compatibility? Maybe we, we are thinking that we need to compatible with MySQL, then we can go for MySQL. We, we have something into PostgreSQL, then we can go for PostgreSQL. Same thing, MariaDB, Cassandra, MangoDB, all supports are there, right? If you want to Cassandra, you can use Cosmos DB for Cassandra API. You can do MangoDB and MangoDB Cassandra API, MangoDB Cosmos DB API also you can use and then you can leverage everything if you need uh, relational database then we have sql database based on depending upon our need we can go for that one if you need uh, uh, to store semi structured data and schema on read we would not have to go for schema on write then you can go for cosmos db uh, with sql api also if we need something smb interfaces and share files on network we can go for azure files also we need anything to store like multimedia files and other things we can go for blob storage and maybe that if you want to archive something for long purpose we can use blob storage for that one 
if you want to search index uh, data, all the indexing we can do of using the Azure search we can do. If we have something with time series related thing, we can do time series insight for that one. If you go and drill down that one that we have large data into terabyte and petabyte for analysis purpose, then uh, which kind of a store we can use? Either we can go for a uh, blob storage or we can go for data lake store. And data lake great, storage is a great option where you can plug a Spark and other great open source technology and you can do whatever you want to do. You have binary images, blob and other things you can put over there. <laughs> so. Uh, if you have graph db then you mean graph related data you can go for cosmos db with graph api enabled if you need some transient data you can go for redis cache and cosmos db sql api both you can leverage you can see that one and then then that is the option we have and that is how we can select that one that is how we do also <coughs> now going into little bit much details on that one as we talk this is that same thing some few things we can see that one that if we want to go for fully serverless compute how much scaling we need as as we want to scale only storage part or we want to scale that compute part also previously when we rem I remember that uh, when we has to scale storage we used to have additional hard drives into physical machines and other things the same thing we do not need here uh, we can additionally attach any blob storage and other things for the compute we can plug some um, additional different things uh, the different compute services along that so that is how we see that which service is supporting either serverless compute i do not want to manage any any infra i do not want to manage any patches and that makes my life easy and i i am a great fan of serverless option for feature provided by different things so it is some more um, able for searching that it how it is supposed the right it is managed service or we have to manage that one what is the primary database model it is relational columnar format wide hive like if you are go to hbas or hbas or hive how that uh, primary database model wide column store or it is in memory store or which kind of a story is that one does it support SQL language or it is just optimized for a speed server layer or not right which kind of drivers it is being used for that one so that we can see <coughs> If we talk about a scalability purpose that how much scalable this service are, right? It is it has redundant regional server for high abilities. One data center goes down, one region goes down. Is that going to be available in another region? My service should not go down, right? Anytime. How much query scale I have, how much I can do that, how much dynamic scalability I can do that to scale up I can do or not. Does this service have in memory caching for data or not for fasting uh, fast purpose? That also we see. <coughs> And uh, the most important part that how the authentication and uh, on the um, on authentication and authorization is being supported on that service is the data is being encrypted addressed because I do not want to um, lose my data to someone where they can read without doing anything right does the service support um, rollable access or not that supports a firewall or not so that I can block some of IPs or some of the places from there does it support data and dynamic data masking or not I have some data into credit card i want to store that one but i want to mask that one i i don't want to store into plain text format kind of things so that supports or not right so this is the few things i was thinking to discuss and when we talk about azure's data service these are the few services offered by microsoft and i guess it should be helpful to you also thank you very much <laughs>